Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. In this video, I'm going to take a look at a game between the Chinese prodigy 16 year old Wei Yi against Yuri Vovk. The game is played in the second round of the Chess World Cup in Baku 2015, as I'm sure you're aware. And I was curious about this game because I covered the game Ray Robson against Yuri Vovk on the first round. A brilliant victory for Yuri Vovk. And they repeated the same line that Wolf played against Robson and Wei Yi obviously had something in mind. So let's have a look what happened. Wei Yi went 1e4 as he tends to. e4, e6, d4, d5. The French opening is not employed very often by Yuri Wolf, the Ukrainian grandmaster. But he did have success with it against Robson. So he saw no reason not to repeat it. But of course it's more dangerous to repeat a line than to use it for the first time to surprise your opponent and Wei Yi did not mind following the game that Wolf played in the first round. Knight c3, knight f6, e5, knight f d7, f4, c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop e3, c takes d. For details and alternatives check out my video on the game Robson against Wolf. They follow this game 22 castles long castles and a6 and here Wei Yi comes up with his improvement which is not a novelty by any stretch of the imaginations in fact it's one of the main moves in this position he plays queen to f2 h4 is the other main move Robson played knight b3 but after bishop to b4 a very strong move keeping this bishop alive black didn't really face any problems and won a brilliant game so Wei Yi goes for queen to f2 the main idea of that move is to immediately, immediately determine the situation in the center. Black can't go b5 obviously because of knight takes c6. Knight takes c6 is a threat which black has to address. And what they do here is the move that Yuri Wolf plays, the move bishop takes d4. The move bishop b4 which we've seen in the other game still possible but now white can arrange his pieces quite harmoniously with knight c2 so this is not very popular. Set bishop takes d4 is the main line, bishop takes d4 and b5. We have sort of a double-edged situation. White is doing well strategically. He has for now the two bishops and especially black is left with his standard bad bishop on c8. But black will try to do something about that. He will try to create some initiative on the queen side first of all by going queen a5 and then b4. We'll see that in the game. And there is always the plan later on to go a5 and then exchange this bishop via a6. So this is a theoretical main line. Black is by no means in big trouble here, but strategically it's a little easier to be white. And let's see how Wei Yi handles this, this situation, what he has in mind. He goes bishop e3, keeps the two bishops on the board so he doesn't have to wait for black to go knight takes d4 at a convenient moment. Queen to a5 as mentioned, king to b1 to cover the a2 pawn, b4, knight to e2. All of this is mainline theory, that's why I'm rushing through it. Queen to c7 back, might look a little strange, but now black has done his duty on the queen side. The queen has done her duty, forcing this knight back, and black switches to the plan of going a5 and bishop a6. All of this has been seen in some high-level games. For example, there were two games between Fabiano Carana and Georg Meyer. In the first game, Karana went for the move knight to g3 and didn't achieve all that much. And in the second game, he tried to improve with knight to d4. But apparently, Wei Yi has his own opinion on these lines and he decides to stick with the old move, the move knight to g3. And probably he prepared an improvement over that game. Knight g3 has the idea of using this knight for attacking purposes on the king's side to go knight to h5, followed by queen to g3 in many lines and target the g7 spot. Black plays the natural move a5. This, yeah, has two ideas. One is to exchange his bad bishop with bishop a6. The other is to continue his attack with a4 and b3 to open up the white king. Knight to h5. All of this has still been seen. And here, Yuri Wovk plays a novelty. I'm not sure if he knew this was a novelty or if he was on his own here, if he was surprised by Wei Yi's line. He plays the move f6, which is an interesting move. I'll tell you the details in a minute. He could have followed the game by Georg Meyer by playing a4 here. In that game, black did all right after bishop to b5, bishop to a6, I believe. Yeah, bishop takes, rook takes, and black got a decent position. It ended in a draw later on. 
but I'm sure Wei Yi uh, look at this game and prepared an improvement here. What I'm not sure is what he prepared. One move that comes to mind is the move queen to g3, but then after g6 I couldn't find any way through for white, so maybe it was something else. Maybe bishop d3 is interesting, to bishop a6 there's some tactics, however, even here it looks like black is holding himself, holding his own, holding himself, whatever. Knight f6 check, for example, gf6, bishop h7, king h7, queen h4, I'm rushing through some pretty variations, but it's only a draw here with the perpetual. So I'm not sure if we'll find out what way Yi had prepared. Maybe the move queen h4 is interesting to go to g5, because instead Yuri Wolf decided to go his own way, play the move f6. This move is double-edged. It's directed against queen g3, which he wants to parry by going rook to f7, and he's trying to activate his rook along the f-file, threatening f takes e5, but you also move a pawn in front of your king, which is, well, often not a good idea because you weaken your pawn formation. Of course, it always depends on the situation. f6, I don't think it's a bad move, but it forces black to be very accurate. Queen to g3, threatening checkmate in one move. Rook to f7, parrying that very threat. Note that black doesn't want to go g6 in any of these lines, unless he really has to, because it weakens his dark squares. And here, for example, why would have easy play with, yeah, let's say knight f6, knight f6, e f, rook f6 and h4, followed by h5 with a ready-made attack. White would have easy play, I'm sorry. So rook f7 is the idea, and Wei Yi continues to develop his pieces, goes bishop b5, planning if he needs to, to exchange his bishop on c6 for the knight, also connecting his rooks so these rooks can enter the game from whatever squares they feel are suitable. Bishop to, no, sorry, f takes e5. I was going to say bishop to a6 because that looks like a natural move. I believe he did not start with bishop a6 because he was afraid of a breakthrough. Very pretty move, the move f5. Turns out after f5, white wins back his piece immediately. Bishop b5, f takes e6, rook e7. And here the tricky move, rook takes d5, and black seems to be in trouble. Rook takes e6, for example, is not very good because of queen g7 checkmate. And if you can't capture this pawn, there is the double attack against both these guys, and white is better. So it could be a reason why Yuri Wolf didn't go for the immediate bishop a6, but first clarified the situation in the center with f takes e and f takes e, which once again has its drawbacks because now white can use the f file to get his attack going and it turns out the pawn on e5 is untouchable in most lines. Here, for example, knight de5 would run into bishop f4, and the threat of bishop c6 with this pin will cost black the game already. The game might be strong, but will cost black a good position. Queen b7, only move it seems like, bishop e5, knight e5, and rook hf1 with problems for black because the white attack is very strong. And has even some ideas with bishop e8 in the air. So taking on e5 would have been too greedy. Instead, Wolf played the logical move bishop a6 now, that when there's no longer any f5 breakthroughs. And Wei Yi went for bishop takes c6, trying to ease the pressure on the e5 pawn and going for a position with opposite color bishops. The computer doesn't like that move. It gives the move rook df1 instead, which normally the computer knows about these things, might have been stronger. Knight de5, I'm guessing that's the move that made Wei Yi not go for this now, defending his rook on f7. It's too late for bishop f4, because now the bishop is on priest. But here the computer sees white in the driver's seat after takes, takes, and bishop to h6. It's not immediately obvious why, and it still isn't to me, but after g6, for example, knight f6, king h8, knight g4, the white pieces coordinate quite nicely, the black king is stuck on the back rank, and there's many tactical ideas that seem to tilt the odds slightly in white's favor. In this position looks like there's no defense for black already. So well, maybe a chance missed here, the very interesting move rook d to f1, but Wei Yi decided to play more simply, went for bishop takes c6 and queen takes c6. When we have this scenario with opposite color bishops where it's all about who is first to attack to build an in initiative, and where he wastes no time goes for the move bishop h6. Obviously planning to take on g7, 
but the main goal is to provoke the move g6. We'll see that in the game, which would give white a target for his attack. Well, first play the move rook c8, which makes a lot of sense, targeting the c2 pawn, where he defends it by going rook to c1. And now Wolf plays g6, and this turns out to be serious inaccuracy. Here Black had to find a move which is by no means easy, because you really want to cover that g7 spot or not allow bishop g7 or knight g7. But it turns out he could have gone knight to c5, and I could not find anything better for white than a draw in a line like knight takes g7, knight to e4, attacking the queen, which wants to stay on the g-file to cover the g7 knight, queen g4, knight to f2, and once again the queen has to stay on the g-file, goes to g5 or g3, knight retreats to e4, and there's nothing white can do then to, but repeating moves. Queen g4 seems to be the only move because if this queen goes somewhere, black is just better. So had Wolf gone knight c5, probably it would have been a correct but not very exciting draw, but that's not what happened in the game. He played g6, the human move, which gives white a target for attacking knight f4, immediately threatening knight takes g6, and also planning to go h4, h5 to expose the black king. It turns out that this attack is quite dangerous. Maybe black should have taken on e5 here, but it would not have eased his suffering because of rook to e1 when the black position remains in very critical state. Instead, Wolf played the logical king h8, defending against the threat of knight takes g6, but now where he switches to the other plan, which is to go h4 and h5, trying to include this rook in the attack as well. Knight to c5, the knight finally goes for the e4 square, but it is a little late. White just continues his attack with h5, knight e4, queen to h4, once again carrying a lot of threats, h takes g6 and knight takes g6. Black has to do something, he goes g takes h5, the alternative was the move g5, but it also doesn't seem to help all that much, just bishop takes g5, that is like bishop f6, and once again knight g6, and black seems to be lost here. So g takes h5 was played, queen takes h5, attacking the rook on f7, and once again introducing the theme of knight g6 check, queen to e8, defending that rook and preparing to remove it to offer an exchange of queens. Here knight g6 looks tempting, but I wouldn't have done that much damage, black is not forced to take it, which would lose after queen g6, but he couldn't just go king g8, ignore the knight, and white doesn't have anything better but retreating to f4. Instead, there was a very strong move at white's disposal here, the move bishop to g5. This move might not look like anything special, but the threat of bishop f6 check is surprisingly hard to meet. For example, a4, bishop f6, knight takes f6, e takes f6, and white just plans to go knight g6 check now, followed by knight e5, and it turns out there's nothing black can do about that, because h7 is always hanging, you can't remove this rook, let's say a3, knight g6, king g8, knight e5, and we would see a complete triumph of white's strategy, where his knight has reached the perfect square, the black bad bishop doesn't really join the game at all, and black can resign, for example, let's say rook b7, queen g5 check, king h8, knight g6, and game over. However, where he did not play the move bishop g5, which, yeah, is not the most human of maneuvers, instead he played a much more normal move, he played the rook to h4, sidestepping the threat of knight g3, and preparing to include this rook into the game as well, should he need it. And we already see that white has a lot of attackers on the king side, and it turns out it's too many. Wolf tried to defend himself by offering a queen exchange with rook b7, but where he says, no thank you, I'd rather keep the queens on the board, goes queen g4, takes the pawn on e6, and keeps ideas with bishop, knight g6, or bishop g5. It's just very tough to defend with opposite color bishops, because this guy on a6 is just a spectator in the defense when the attack is on the dark squares. Queen g8 was tried, trying to exchange queens, once again, even at the cost of a pawn, but where he sticks to his guns, he likes the queens on the board, goes queen h3, keeping all the advantages of his position, and once again just planning to continue a slow build-up on the king side. Queen f7, I'm sure maybe the most resilient here was a move knight f2, still offering to go for this endgame pawn down after queen takes e6, 
But white could also just play queen f3 when the knight doesn't have anything better than to return to e4, at least threatening a nasty little fork. But here there's already tactics in the air. For example, not for example, exactly, knight takes d5, e takes d5, and rook takes e4. d takes e4, queen f6 check, rook g7, all forced, bishop g7, queen g7, queen takes a6, and white emerges. I can't count, but I think a pawn up with a pretty much a winning position. Still, this would have been better than the game continuation in the game after queen h3, where you did not, no, sorry, Wolf did not play knight f2, but went queen f7, trying to hang on by going rook g8 and increasing his defenders there, which was punished by knight takes e6. There was a more spectacular move here, the move bishop g7, once again, thanks Mr. Computer, I would not have thought of this myself, queen takes g7 and queen takes e6, threatening queen c8, queen a6 and knight g6. You can't parry all three of those, and if you parry two by going rook g8, then after queen takes a6, Black once again is left with a pretty desperate position, still being under attack and being pawn down. Not very good for Black. Neither is the game continuation though, knight takes e6 can't be called a mistake because White remains firmly in the driver's seat, rook g8 to parry the threat of bishop g7, and just knight to d4. Maintaining control, the knight reaches a good square, the e6 pawn is gone so that now e6 can become very unpleasant for black and we'll see in the game with this long diagonal opening this bishop might find some very useful work here as well. Black position is lost, he tried the move queen f2 going for some counterplay attacking the knight on d4 but here where he answers with a very precise move, very nice move, the move rook to d4 offering a peace sacrifice but that should not be accepted because after queen d4 it's tried. Checkmate. So you can't take that and black had to go rook e8 but once again now his king does not have a lot of air and where he finishes smoothly by going bishop to e3, queen to f7, e6, now opening this diagonal and we'll see in a minute, well more in a second, why this is bad news because after queen f6 he played knight to f3 preparing bishop to d4 and the game is over. There's nothing black can do about the threat of bishop d4. One thing that impressed me, black resigned here, so nice victory for Wei Yi. And one thing that impressed me is that black never got any breather to get his attack going on the queen side the slightest bit. The pawn didn't even make it to a4 and this bishop never got the chance to move again after going to a6. So Wei Yi, even though he missed some computer lines, played the attack very smoothly and completely outplayed his opponent, who will probably regret that he repeated the line he chose against Ray Robson this time with a very different outcome. Nice game by the Chinese prodigy Wei Yi. The Chinese are going strong in this tournament so far. This is the first, first game of the second round, so everybody that lost in this first game has to win tomorrow to reward being one of them to avoid elimination. And we'll see how that goes. However, at the time you're watching this video, it might be long gone. Still, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed Wei Yi's play. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.